If I could get three two hundred something like that, that would be quite good. Of the first, the, of the, the first, first waters, yeah. And then I'll add another two thousand litres to that. Just beat this up a wee bit. You can get systems that do it all automatically, that monitor it, uh, and that, but ours is all very, handmade. very low tech, handmade if you like. <laughs> uh, it's quite simple to understand the valve is either open or closed. Uh, you can't go far wrong with that. So everything's as simple as it can be, which yeah. uh, means it's a little bit more labour intensive. Do you have much help? Are you, do you do this all yourself? Uh, my brother yeah. uh, helps occasionally. Uh, we had a student from Harriet Watt University over the summer. That was quite a, a good help. It meant I wasn't tied here all the time. I could go and get on with other work on the farm. Uh, because you're yeah. both farming yes. full time as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is a semi louter mash tun. Uh, we're just adding the second waters at the moment. We'll add about 2,000 litres to it, just the same as the first waters. We we'll add it in. We stir it up with the rakes and then we allow it to sit not quite as long this time, probably about 40 minutes. And uh, then we start draining again. And this water's at what temperature? This water's going in at 81 degrees. Because the conversion has taken, taken yes. place, the, the, the conversion yeah. of the starch into sugar. Yeah. You, you keep increasing the temperature to try and dissolve. Flash it out. Yep, dissolve as much of the, 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 the starch and sugar as is possible. By the time you get to your third waters, you're only getting about 6% of your sugars at that stage. So it's not, uh, it's not strong enough to ferment, so and you just save it over and use it as the first waters right. the next day. Yeah, we expel it out through the floor, goes out the auger at the side of the building and we feed it to our own cattle. Yeah, quite a nice warm treat in a cold morning. I bet. Porridge. Yeah. No alcohol in this, no. though, so yeah. stories of drunk cows or something. Yeah. It's nonsense. This is the still house. Yeah, <coughs> look at this. Gosh, they're beautiful little stills. And the capacities of the stills? 650 gallons for the, the wash still. Uh, 2,000 litres. Uh, I'm not sure what that is in gallons for. Well, the which makes still. them approximately um, the size of farm stills would have been in the early 19th century. Yep. So it's a real farm distillery. It is. Yeah, yeah. And what do you charge? How, what's your charge in this wash still? We uh, split a wash back in half. So if we have 5,000 litres in a wash back, we'll put 2,500 litres into the uh, wash still. If we have, if we have 6,000 litres in a wash back, it would be 3,000 litres in the wash Right. Still. Which means that your charge would probably come up, what, to... No, no, much lower than lo that. Below, yeah, way yeah, below yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. mandor. Because when you pump it across, there's a lot of foam, and the foam only comes up to below the mando. And that in itself would make for a lot of copper contact, and yeah. therefore for a, a lighter spirit. Yeah. yeah. The lie arm goes up the way as well, which uh, causes a bit more reflux. Yes. A lot of the spirit condenses on the lie pipe and runs back into the still which again gives us a lighter spirit. Why did you go for a plain shape, Francis, rather than a boil bowl or lamp We thought glass? it was more elegant. Yeah. Uh, and, and possibly more traditional as well. Possibly. Uh, we, we started with... We knew basically the, the type... We, we wanted to make a, a lowland-style spirit. <coughs> uh, and we knew basically... We started basically with uh, the st still type that we... Uh, to produce that kind of whiskey and we deleted the ones that we didn't like the shape of and we were left with that is a very like sound way of m deciding yeah. I think the aesthetics yeah. and you've got a gigantic condenser yeah it gives us a lot of copper contact yeah. for removing any sulfury elements in the spirit it gives us a very clean spirit 
I never asked you where your water came from. Our water, we have our own spring on the farm, uh, supplies our own drinking water, has done for many years. The next door, there's an um, old mansion house at Pit Lair. It's now an old folks' home. The water was originally to supply the big house on the estate. So it's a good spring, it won't run dry. Yeah. Well, never has done yet anyway, mm. but uh, mm. who knows what the future holds. And that supplies both your production water and your, yes. your cooling water. Yeah. I'm interested to see that you've got um, coils. Well, they're not even coils, actually. No, it's a serpentine. Uh, we chose a serpentine rather than kettles yes. or coils because we could fit them lower in the bottom of the still to try and boil more from the bottom. Also, it allows us to use a lower charge so that the heating element is always covered by the liquid, even when you're near finished yes. distilling. It's a very shallow still. Yes. Uh, one of Forsyth's workmen, when they were installing the still, said the previous distillery had been in Speyside. He needed a 12-foot ladder to get to the bottom, <laughs> from the man door to the bottom of the still. Yes. This um, one barely comes up to your waist. Yeah, yeah. No, they're cute wee things. They really are. So once this is distilled off... Goes into the low wines tank under the floor. Yep. And uh, the low wines and faints are pumped into the... You keep the faints separate? Stuff. Yes, we have separate uh, receivers for the low wines and faints. Uh, they're both pumped dry into the spirit still. And, uh, so again, your charge, again. your charge in the spirit still would be what? We're generally charging about 1,500 litres in the spirit still. Uh, with, I don't know whether it's the, the increase in the live pipe, but we tend to get quite high uh, levels of alcohol coming off. Our low wines are quite high in alcohol and our faints are quite high in alcohol. So that gives us a less volume. So what is the, char what is the strength of your low wines? Uh, varies a little bit, depending on how good a job we've done uh, next door, but 25 to or about there. Mm, yeah. I think the average is about 20. It's a little bit higher than that. Yeah. And our faints will be about 35. -ish. And how long do you run your faint, your four shots for? Quite short and four shots uh, run about five minutes. Yeah, a, lot of the, a lot of the f fruity flavours come off early in the spirit run. Yes. And we want to capture them. So we'll only run it for about five minutes. But Again, it comes through very clean. Yes. Uh, we've, we asked for a water line put on the, the spirit So you can do so the hazing do a water test. Ta yeah. test. And it's very rare, even right at the start, that we get a, a cloudy sample. Yes. And the stills will have been polished and then lacquered. That's right. And then, but why is, it dif why is the condenser a different colour? The heat, in, when you're running the still, darkens the copper. Oh. Uh, I don't know whether it's the copper or the lacquer that gets darkened. You can see in the condenser, this part of the condenser is always cold, and that's the colour it was when it was originally lacquered. How interesting. Um, so there you can see it's obviously condensed yeah. by the time it's got to about there, yeah. and it's cold. The, the heat gives it a lovely chestnut colour to the copper. How often would you reckon you have to uh, clean them? I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, they reckon 10 to 15 years, Three. but yeah. that's... That's the big distilleries that are running seven yeah, days a week. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hopefully we'll manage a little longer. Yeah, I would think so, probably. But it does chip. You see little bits where there's been marks in it. And it or if you... <coughs> the drips on the, out of the air valve mark the, the copper as well. Yeah, you can see the seams, can't you, maybe? Yep, where it's been welded. Yeah. The really interesting bits is the curves. Well, they're all hand hammered. I can see that. They, yeah. You can see each hammer mark yeah. in the copper. Beautiful. Beautifully made. We normally do it on a machine, but because these were so small, a lot of it was done by hand. Hand made, yeah. It's how you take a flat sheet, a sheet of copper and produce yeah, all these curves it? on it. Yeah. Great skill. It's the most elegant little, well, very, very nice still house. It really is. All fits in quite nicely into the existing building. And what was this room used for in the original mill? I don't think it was part of the mill. Uh, we used it as a, a straw shed. Yeah. Uh, once upon a time, the old combine was parked in here. Yeah, yeah. 
Great. So let's go downstairs and have a look at the, um, at the spirit safe. And the, um, here's the spirit safe made by Forsyth as well. Yeah. The stills and the mash tun were made by Forsyth. Yeah, yeah. They are the global experts, I think, on uh, yeah, these think sorts of things. So. Although there are several other companies uh, building stills as well. Abercrombie's? Yes. Uh, Macmillan's and Preston Farms. Ah, yes, right. They're still going, are they? Yes. Yeah. So here the low wines run yep. from the wash still. And here... That's where we take our cuts. Yep. Run and into faints first, five minutes, then switch over onto spirit. And this is where and we can measure the uh, alcoholic percentage with the, the hydrometers in the safe. Uh, what are these things for? These, these are the steam valves. Uh -huh. uh, the large valve uh, gives you crude control and the smaller valve allows a lot finer control of the heat. Because when you're, bring, especially the wash, when you're bringing it in, it tends to foam up the neck. That's what the glasses on the side yes. of the still are for, so you can see if it's boiling up. Uh, usually describe it as it's like trying to boil milk. Yes, that's right. It's very easy to boil it over. And if you boil it right over the neck, that gives you a foul distillation. What do you do if that were to happen? Start uh, again. Start again. Oh, yeah. God. But this is great because you're like the captain of a ship here. You can you've got all your, so, all your controls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can watch your, your sight glass, it's, see how your wash is doing. There was a lot of thought put into measuring heights and angles to get them in the right place so that you don't have to turn your head on your side to see through the glasses. This is our filling store where we fill the barrels with a new made spirit. We pump the spirit from the receiver next door after it's been reduced to 63 and a half. What's your ISR strength? It comes in between 72 and 73 percent. Wow, that's high. Yeah. Why, how do you account for that? Because the average would be 70, 68 even. Yeah. Uh, we're quite short on four shots. So we're catching most of the high strength alcohols. Yep. Uh, perhaps with the lie arm rising as well. Uh, honest answers, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So you reduce it down to that magic figure, 11 63 degrees and a half. over proof. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we've consulted and we're told that that is the best strength for filling. That's uh, what they say. We would quite like to fill it full strength. Saves a lot of room in the warehouse, but uh, we're told if you do that, it takes longer to mature. Much longer maturation. Yeah. So, and this all this everybody can't be wrong. You don't have a spout that look, this is not a measured spout. You just have no. to use your use your eye. We we'll weigh the cask, stick that in. This is your weigh platform. Yep. Fill it up. Weigh it again once it's full. And there you go. Take a bung, knock it in and then roll the barrel out the door and up into the warehouse. Well, maturation warehouse, yep. number one. It's number one warehouse. How many casks can you accommodate here? Don't know. We'll find out when it's full. <laughs> and you've got this floor and you've got upstairs. That's right. Which is about the same height, isn't it? Probably Maybe keep us going another year. In yeah. here. And then we've got number two warehouse next door. And what are you filling? Predominantly uh, fresh bourbon casks. American White Oak, fresh yeah. bourbon. Mainly from ex Heaven Hill. And brought in as is. They're brought yes. in whole, yeah. not, not in, yeah. in stooks. Yeah. We get them from the Cooperage down in Broxburn. He just brings them. They come off the container and you know, puts them on his trailer and brings them up. So they're as fresh as we can get them. Yeah. Any butts? Any, any we have filled a few sherry butts, yes. Uh, we'll probably do a few more, but predominantly uh, bourbon barrels. Do you reckon that'll uh, well, the light, it'll, it'll suit the, the start yeah. of the spirit? Yeah. yeah. They mature quite quickly. Do they? Yeah. yeah. What's your sort of temperature here? Would you describe it as fairly cool in Fife, would you not say? Well, I wouldn't have said Fife was cool, but I would say it's freezing in here today. Aye, aye. So, yes, today, yes.